we're raising our level of consciousness is what I was saying to Larissa earlier. Yeah, it doesn't happen overnight, but slowly and surely that's the goal is we're raising our level of being, our dimensions mm -hmm. of being are, we're leveling up. Which is really, I mean, yoga obviously means like union or to yoke, but it's also, it's like being able to control the mind, like, like, all yeah. of these techni techniques help with um, Con tranquil mind, help with eventually controlling the mind. Yeah, controlling the mind, and that is, you know, with the asanas on the mat, and then also out in the modern world. How do you react to challenge, and how do you react to, um, yeah, to, you know, if things don't go your way, or you're mm -hmm. being challenged, or physically, or mentally, or emotionally? Um, do you let it happen and try to just breathe through it and you know like go with the flow and allow yourself allow just allow it to happen allow it to be mm -hmm. and have faith that everything's gonna work out or do you like freak out. have this crazy you know mental um, dispute and you know you're <laughs> freaking out in your mind and you know you're yeah it's just yeah just allowing yourself to kind of be aware of that and and then at some point with self-reflection you kind of start to realize wow okay like this is happening anyways like mm -hmm. let it happen it's okay you know yeah. it's like I could either freak out and like you know resist it mm -hmm. or let it be and you can open up yeah um, yeah it's February 26 2019 Welcome to episode six of Yoga Can, creating space with yoga. I'm Lauren Sanders, your host. Today, we are traveling to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and those two voices that you just heard are Emily Sarf and Larissa Metter, the co-owners of a brand new yoga studio located on East Sherman in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, the Space Yoga Studio. The Space Yoga Studio is really quite a gem. It has a super warm feeling in there. And what Emily and Larissa are doing is pretty incredible. Within this episode, they talk about the power of mindfulness, meditation, and breathing. And it's really refreshing to hear a studio whose mission is to go beyond the asana, the physical yoga practice, and offer meditation practices. It was also really great to talk with Emily and Larissa because like me, they are both new yoga teachers so we talk a lot about like what it's like to be a new yoga teacher, and they also open up about how it has been to start a new studio. Now, before we go any further, I do want to let you know about something. The Space Yoga Studio is hosting a Dreamtime Sound Journey in Yoga Nidra with Alicia and Seth Blackwoof this Sunday, March 3rd at 3 p.m. This Dreamtime Sound Journey is a semi-private session, so it's going to be a little bit more intimate and connected of experience. There's going to be a shamanic Reiki, also known as healing touch energy movement. There's going to be aromatherapy, warm herbal neck pillows, lavender eye pillows, candies and tea. I personally can't think of a better way to spend my Sunday. Space is limited, so sign up on their Facebook page at the Space Yoga Studio. Please enjoy episode six of Yoga Can, creating space with yoga. So I was reading the bios and I didn't, so you guys, I did not send one. Committed, yeah, what the heck? <laughs> so I was scared. scared. Yesterday, I was scared, okay? Yesterday oh I was like, God, did you send your bio? And she was like, no, I don't know what to say. I was like, you need to just say something, like anything. Just talk Hi. about yourself. I'm Hi. Emily. Hi. I'm <laughs> Emily. Emily. And I love yoga. <laughs> yeah. I love Perfect. yoga. I can't, 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 can't wait that. to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can discuss me later. Um, so... Okay, so I was reading it though, and you, so you guys committed to this space before <laughs> yeah, you ever went taught to a Bali. class. Before you ever taught a class, before you even went to Bali. Yeah. Yes. So, what <laughs> can you kind of like walk us through <laughs> like that whole whole thing? And like, how did you decide on Bali? Like, why was that where you mm -hmm. wanted to go for your training besides it being Bali? You know? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that, well, for one, um, Emily and I, I kind of mentioned um, in the bio, we had been talking about 
opening some sort of studio. We didn't really know exactly. Like I was always like yoga, and she kind of was like maybe something else. She cycle. loved indoor cycling. So oh, we were like cool. in okay. the beginning, we were like, okay, like how could we maybe open up like a yoga cycling studio? Um, this I was, was living. Like four in, years I was ago. living in Ashland, Oregon, and yeah. we would just be like on the phone, like you know, 10 o'clock at night, like talking about like what it would look like and you know, how, what it would be and you know, all these, all these things. And yeah, I mean, at the time it was like, well, this this is great. Like I love talking about this. It's inspiring, but it seems a little far-fetched because you know, we're we're not even living in the same, in the same town right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was still inspiring and something that we, yeah, like really were passionate about. And then we decided on Bali years ago. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, yeah, over an email. Yeah, we were like, oh, this Let's is... Let's go to Bali! Like, Emily sent me some, um, I think, he, yeah, you sent me some training. It's not the one we actually ended up doing, but it was one in Bali, and we were both just like, yes, this is amazing. Like, you know, we need to make this happen at some point. It was like, we need to make this, this is a life goal. This is like a, <laughs> yes, like a five-year goal, goal or something, you know? Yeah. Like, this will happen when we're, you know, like, let's just keep staying in touch, keep seeing, you know checking in with each other and seeing where we're at and when we can make it happen. And then, and then, yeah, I moved back to Coeur d'Alene and, um, and then we really started like diving deeper into it and looking at spaces and like coming up with all these business plans and like trying to figure out uh, how this was going to happen when, yeah, we, we both were we still kind of like, had no taught. idea what we were doing. We had no idea. Anything. We didn't know if we would like it or hate yeah. it or anything. All we knew is, you know, we've been doing yoga off and on really like nothing super consistent or serious, but off and on for like five, six years. Yeah. You know, like, and we just like dove right in and, and that was definitely, definitely my personality for sure was just for like, sure. So, so my, oh God, Emily, like so, I, so I grew up with business owners. My, my family okay. are all entrepreneurs. They have never worked for anybody in their entire life. I grew up with, with parents, my grandparents where we'd sit every morning and have breakfast. They didn't have to go off to work. Like they, they own their own business. We would talk about business. Like my uncles would be like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, and blah, 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 blah. So this is what's That's going on. Cool. The whole corporate world is very unfamiliar to me. It, so like the, the entrepreneur world never really scared me, but it is scary. I'm not saying it's not, but like, I was like, no, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So, so yeah, we talked about it. She, she moved home and I went, okay, let's do this. You know, like we're doing this. And Larissa's is like, I'm like scared. So, like, I'm oh, like, we had so some conversations and just, that night. Like, just like freaked out, but also excited and like passionate and like, okay, well, you know, maybe I just do, maybe I need to take this leap and and grow from it and, and be a little bit scared and be okay with that fear and Mm -hmm. let it help me grow. Um, but yeah, this, this space actually just really fell into our laps, like completely 100% and everything about it. We came in here. I mean, it was, it was a wreck. Like we were like, what is the ceilings were like, Like, you know, they were low. Oh, Oh, the ceilings were totally low. Everything was like, there was like six walls in here. This was like wow. six different rooms. Yeah. Seriously. Give a before and after photo. Yeah, yeah I have some photos. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it was definitely totally different, but then, I mean, but if the price was right, everything was like, okay, this is like three blocks away from my house. Like, mm-hmm. that's awesome. And then, um, you know, it's East Sherman. It's up and coming. There's, you know, all yes. this new stuff happening over here. And all the other places that we had kind of looked at were way over our price budget, like way over and ridiculous, really. Yeah, I don't know. Like ridiculous. some of them were just crazy. Um, so, and then, yeah, my, my boyfriend is um, like a construction, he's done construction, he's done like everything. Um, he's super He's done handy. everything for this studio. Yeah, he, he, he did almost furniture. everything. He built, he built yes. our furniture. This is awesome. Yeah. And he's then, done everything. If, if. Yeah, if he worked in the studio for months. Shout out and then, to Austin. Like, yeah, totally. <laughs> and then um, Emily's family helped with, you know, like a lot of, so, like, yeah, some of it too. And then mm-hmm. my dad's an electrician. So, like, we oh, definitely had some some help in that in that sense, which was great. But, yeah, it fell into her lap. I kind of, she, and we signed a lease. Like, I was, like, freaking out. I was like, Emily, I don't think I want to do this. Like, mm-hmm. I, for me, it's uh-huh. so hard. I'm, like, that conversation more free-spirited. That conversation we had at night. Yeah. Don't want to really be held down. No. Yes, no yeah. yeah. No. Like, I'm not, I just haven't ever committed to something for, for so long. And I also knew, I also did know that it would, it would help me grow. Like, it's a mm-hmm. challenge, and it's, you know, I, I want to always be challenging myself, and, 
I felt the growth, you know, just from making this decision. So I'm, I'm so happy I did. But at the time, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, this is absolutely insane for me. Um, but Emily pushed me through and talk, <laughs> talked me into it. And, it and I'm really glad she did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a beautiful space. The training that you did in Bali. So how did you, so you always, you always knew you wanted to go there, but why did you choose, um, that particular, like what, what was the training called? Who led it? Um, you know, why did you want to do that? Cause it's Hatha yes. yoga, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe you could start off describing Hatha yoga mm -hmm. for people who don't really know. Um, Laura's is like Emily. Um, yeah, Hatha yoga, hot, we call it Hatha. Hatha okay. yoga is, um, there's a lot of, it's really utilizing the breath in, in the pranic movement in your body. That, that's what Hatha is. And it's the energetics of sequencing. That's mm -hmm. Hatha. Um, and it, Hatha is, it's, it's kind of complicated. Hatha is about um, embracing the world. So there's this whole philosophical kind of like thing be behind it too. Mm -hmm. So so that's really what Hatha is. I don't want to, I mean, it, it, just a lot of tools and techniques and, and pranayama and, and breath work and a certain type <laughs> of uh, breathing like Agni Raj. We were taught Agni Raj breath. And that's what we utilized uh, in, in the postures. So, um, ha, does ha mean sun and ta means Yeah, moon? so it means sun and moon, which is actually really cool because we're the space yoga studio. Um, it just yeah. kind of makes sense, um, which is really cool. But it, It's about and, balance. And we didn't, honestly, going into our training, we, we no had idea. No, idea no idea what... We didn't even know we were being taught Tantra Kata until week three. We didn't know what, <laughs> we didn't know what type of yoga we were even like being taught. Like, and we, it doesn't matter. Not in an ignorant way, but in a way that we... Um, well, Emily found, she's, like, the queen of finding, like, the best Airbnbs and, like, the best, like, you know, um, all stuff like that. Yeah, um, like, air, airline. Yeah, pods. like, yeah, yes. all sorts of, yes. 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 So she was sending me, like, all these different um, trainings That's and awesome. all these different, like, links and stuff, and we were going through them together, and, you know, we'd go get coffee or whatever, and we'd be like, okay, like, this one, this one, and then Zuna Yoga came out um, of... Yeah, just kind of like out of nowhere, and oh, we were like, um, yeah. this is amazing. amazing. <laughs> like, their, um, just their whole, their whole mission and their portfolio and, like, everything, like, their whole website, everything is just, um, so hard to explain. Yeah, it's it like, is. It is. Yeah, their expression just, it really, like, vibed with us. Like, we were yeah. just like, okay, like, we really like this, and... Um, it was all inclusive. Like everything just seemed like effortless. Like they make it very effortless yeah, you for just you. Kind of you show just up. show up, and you're like, "Wow, we're here. Okay, this That's is awesome." Nice. And they take great care of you. I yeah. don't. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. It just like, yeah, we just liked it. We didn't know. even really know what type of yoga exactly. Yeah. They talk a lot about, yeah, so many different things: the breath, the energy, the the some kind of philosophy, the. The yoga sutras. The um, yoga sutras, like so many obviously different things. Anatomy. And, and even all anatomy and all this stuff. The things that we were just kind of scrolled over. We're like, looks good, looks good, yeah. looks good, let's do it. <laughs> well, because we have nothing to reference into. You know, like if you've yeah. just been. If you don't oh, know, totally. If you haven't know. really been a teacher or in that kind of mind state, like just being a student of yoga, you don't really, you weren't. I wasn't really aware of like what I was seeking because exactly. I was back. I was no, just wanting to do know. the practice because yes, the awesome. You're like this is what's important. Yeah, to me. and well, because I, it makes you feel good. It does, and I wanted to know like, so I wanted to know like why I was feeling that good on the mat. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wanted to understand why? it, so that's why I did the training is because I was like, so what's like going on on here? Yeah, <laughs> you totally. know, I have no yeah. idea, and I didn't do it to become a teacher. Or any of that. Mm -hmm. I just did it because I just wanted to like learn more about more like, self discovery. And, yeah, yeah, and what was happening mm -hmm. on. I, I didn't even know the self discovery part was actually going to happen. I. Either I had I. no idea because I've always kind of been pretty self aware mm -hmm. and like for the most part for the, like since I graduated, it's like college, end of college, through till now. I've been very consciously in that state of like just delving in, but I didn't really know. And I've always been practicing yoga. I practice it now for like 15 years actually. So I didn't really know though that yoga was kind of like a part of it. I didn't really 
connect it. Yeah, mm-hmm. until you, could, you couldn't make the connections yeah. Yeah. until. I later. knew why. I, I'm mm-hmm. kind of like a re, like. I like to know why. Like yeah. I, I'm kind of a researcher like that. So that's what I was seeking. I was like, what the heck? Like, yeah. why is this happening? Like, why does this feel so good? Yeah. So I didn't really know much about my training. Either. I was like, okay, cool. Like anatomy, yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yoga sutras, whatever okay. that is. Yeah, <laughs> like cool. That. Well, let's just okay. It sounds amazing. Like it does. whoa, freedom. Yeah. Yes, nice. Yeah. Okay, meditation. Whoa, mind blown. I feel great. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's happening here? And I'm whoa. I'm way more calm. I I don't talk much, but I'm like learning so much. It's like whoa, I can just sit with myself for hours yeah. and hours and hours and be okay with that. Yeah. It's so cool. It's very interesting. Would you recommend the the training to oh, other gosh. people? Yes. Yeah. The Zuna Yoga oh, is my gosh. amazing. And so, yeah, it's led by Everett and Catherine Newell. Um, and they're both amazing teachers. And, yeah, exactly like what I was saying. Something just resonated with us mm-hmm. um, with their, I guess, just going through their pictures and their website and their content and it was just like yes this is this is exactly what we want um and when we when we got there it was it was so effortless and so well not effortless (laughs) but like getting there for us yeah Mm -hmm. getting there and just kind of making that journey it was like okay this is what we're meant to be doing this feels Mm -hmm. so right and um yeah we met amazing like-minded people and had like the most amazing like food and silent mm-hmm. mornings or had silence in the mornings from 5 a.m. when we woke Til up noon. until like noon um, and Emily silence. and I were in the same room so and it was so that. hard for us in the mornings to wake I up can't. and like not you can't even like you're not supposed to you even have look eye at contact each other. Can't and, look at each other. and also the silent other. mornings mm-hmm. is um, no reading no listening to music no um, technology no phones no nothing mm-hmm. it's just you. like you like being just by yourself and yeah. part of that time was doing, like, a three-hour asana and meditation practice. But, m- like, breakfast, um, most amazing breakfast ever. <laughs> but, so, yeah, uh-huh. just, like, raw vegan, like, aca- like, acai bowls and dragon fruit and all this amazing, like, oh, my gosh, I don't even know, like, what, like, I don't even know how to pronounce the types of fruit. I don't even know what I was eating, but it was, like, so great. Um, but, I miss the silence. But the That's breakfast, you're doing it in silence. And you're with, like, you know, 30, 30 29 other people. other people. And you're, like, no eye contact, just, like, doing your thing. And in the beginning, it was so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But then you get used to the silence and you really embrace it. And, like, we, be, we like, like, grew to love it. Loved it. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a little bit about our training. It was, like, we could sit here and talk about our training for hours. Nice. So it's hard to yeah put it in a nutshell but yeah. mm-hmm. why did they I would have definitely you recommend it do the si- <laughs> why did they have you do the silence to um I I guess to to uh yeah it's an inward journey I guess mm-hmm. to bring you back to yourself that mm-hmm. self-awareness to mm-hmm. fully let go of um what's going on at home and what's going mm-hmm. on in your out like other and lives imagine and how distracted we are all the time yeah you know just, by phones and yeah even reading and, and writing and we're our intellectual it kind of lets go of the intellectual mind yeah, you begin to let go yeah. of your thoughts um, and silence really helps bring you to a tranquil state it does because because we all kind of and not you know we all wake up and get on our phones and even if even if we don't do that we've said nope we're not going to do that we're just going to read even reading your mm-hmm. mind starts to just go you know I'm reading and I'm like whoo things are happening here but silence really kind of forces you to um get back to your true nature like and embrace the present moment embrace the present moment and you don't have to do what anybody else does Mm -hmm. so you're always finding like in this life that you're kind of like um influenced by by other people and reading and all of these other things where in silence you're doing you. They literally did, those were the rules, but it's like, it's a free for all. So if you're going to go swimming, if you're going to go eat breakfast, if you're going to go right back to bed, like you can do whatever you want do whatever as you long want. as you don't do these things. Um, uh-huh. but yeah, it was really, and it was also at least for, I think that, um, Emily would agree, but it's uh, helps you. Cause we would do five at like, we'd wake up at like 5 a.m. 6 a.m. we do our practice until like 9 a.m. Um, so a three-hour practice in meditation. It helps you feel the effects of your practice, mm-hmm. like the silence. You know, you're really like feeling your body and feeling, you know, letting yourself um, dive into, yeah, the 
the effects of your practice, um, mm-hmm. the effects of meditation and of the asana. It gives you the space. Yeah. Yeah. The mental space. The space. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're, it, you're cleared. You're cleared. It yeah. clears you. And I remember just, like, looking. Like, I would just be sitting, like, you know, drinking my coffee or tea or whatever, like, looking out, like... It helps you embrace nature. Oh like, God. I was, like, so, like, I, like, just Cried. remember literally, like, tears are, like, rolling <laughs> down my face, and I'm, like, looking out into the jungle, and I'm, like, oh, my God. Like, this is, like, this is my life. Like, how how did I get here? And, yeah. like, this is amazing. And, yeah, it just really brings you back to the present moment and the simple things in life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You notice, you notice the all the subtleties. Things, the that's sounds, how you teach. The, you, but you're yeah. a very intentional teacher. Like the, the little things. That's what I notice is that's what yoga is really about is paying attention. Mm-hmm. And so you did during our practice, you paid attention, you paid attention oh, to the aware. Little, being aware. You paid attention to the little things, you know, you were saying these little things and it was, it was, and it kind of reminds me of what happens when you spend a lot of time in silence. You like, stop for a minute and you like smell the flower and you're like whoa that was powerful but you just you just smell the flower like (laughs) it's like the the subtle sensations that become so you become a lot more sensitive 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 to to sensory Mm -hmm. to sensory and to yeah to nature and all these things that we're surrounded by all the time but in our crazy busy lives we're like we're just passing it yeah we don't take the extra you know minute to like yeah stop and smell the roses like it's it's crazy yeah we don't I know I've been craving silence lately as well mm-hmm. and um, this past month we've been practicing prachaharya in a lot of my classes mm-hmm. so the fifth limb of yoga mm-hmm. about um, for the listeners prachaharya is the withdrawal from the external senses inward and mm-hmm. it's been like some of the classes will just bring our hands to the palms of the ears mm-hmm. and just five breaths like holding it in like tree pose or something Mm -hmm. and it's I've been doing I've been trying to practice it in my own life and it's really been helpful because it's like again what you're saying is like it's having me just shut down those external stimuli like the tv or Mm -hmm. reading I didn't even think of reading or writing Mm because like it is it's kind of like your mind's working yeah and instead of just like letting yourself let your mind kind of soften, just flow. Open, just let it be. Flow. Yeah. yeah, let it be. Mm-hmm. It's instead of doing, we're always doing. We we're never are just doing. being. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we deserve just to be because yeah. it kind of reinstates <laughs> that like self worth, self yes. awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, and that we're super enough. cool. Yeah. yeah. What's your vision, your mission for the space? So we are changing our schedule completely, and what we're kind of honing in on is more of the mindful movement. Rad, mm. There's a lot of hot yoga studios opening up in Coeur d'Alene. We, we're noticing this. Oh, really? And I think in that there's a time and place for it. Mm-hmm. But I think what we're kind of honing in on is something a little bit, like we've all been talking about, something a little bit slower. So when it comes to the asana practice, we'll have classes. We have a class called the slow. It's more of a restorative. We're, mm. we're seated a lot, um, holding postures for longer. Um, we have a class called the Mi- mindful flow. We're really going to start teaching more meditations going to try to incorporate that slowly a little bit longer meditations at the end of classes so with a vision that's kind of where I'm you know it it, business I mean it's constantly changing but that's where we're really hoping to go is is that slower more more soulful purposeful movement Mm -hmm. um with with the teaching and the what people should expect when they come here is that yeah that's kind of what we're we're really trying to hone in on and, and find find where where that is because yeah we think there is enough hot yoga and there's enough of the see the community here is super active you know mm-hmm. cycle lots of cycling and running and crossfit and lifting and we're like okay do that absolutely do that because there's a time and place for it but come here and let us teach you how to breathe Mm, find Let's, solitude yeah yeah find some solitude mm-hmm. find some relaxation and and we have a class called the flow where yeah we are it is one of our classes where yeah if you want to come and sweat and it's like more of a vinyasa, yeah, vinyasa. yeah it's more of a vinyasa if you want that yeah we have that too but mm-hmm. I, we're hoping that our, our niche really is more of like yeah the relaxation the, the letting go portion of ba- balance in, mm-hmm. in your life yeah balance and self-care and self-love and um yeah, that inner journey that um, we are all craving, and we just don't know how to really get there because we don't—they don't have the tools. But it's like, let us give you some of these tools. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. to help with that. Yeah, and creating more of a community. Um, we really want to do a lot more events. Mm -hmm. So lots of events. Like a full moon gathering or something like that with some guided meditation. Um, mm -hmm. And just end up, just kind of, yeah, some discussion time and um, connection. Just creating creating a little bit of a, a yeah, yoga community and getting people kind of, um, I guess, introduced to some of these techniques that we, we've been taught. And, yeah. And... And that's something that can be hard to do in every mm -hmm. single class because, you know, we only have, you know, some of our classes are an hour, some of our classes are an hour and 15 minutes. But, um, you know, and some people, you know, we do. We all live busy lives. We're living in the modern world. So it's not easy to take, you know, a two-hour chunk of time for people to be like, okay, I'm going to go to a yoga class and we're going to do a, an hour and a half asana and then a half-hour meditation. So that's why we are trying to isolate the meditation into um, – into our schedule and cool. really putting that in there because that is important to who we are and that's really what what we are super passionate about I mean in Bali we both had some really powerful meditation experiences and um, yeah we just think it's very beneficial for um, for the modern world and you can really use it as a tool that can really help you in all else. aspects of your life and everything else that you do it's like you know I, I wrote this thing like maybe this could potentially be like our mission but at the space yoga studio we connect to our breath so that everything we do in life we do better so go out and do CrossFit go out and do hot yoga come back here we'll teach you how to breathe so you can go do those things better. and not even just in a movement I mean breathing and life. meditation just, I mean yeah you know go do life better yeah. Yeah. It's just connecting with yourself. I mean, it's connecting with the breath, connecting with the self, connecting with the body. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's yeah, the same. It's simple, but it's also complex. It's yeah. like, you yeah. know, it's hard mm -hmm. to put into words. And that's something that we're also realizing is that, you know, talking about yoga and talking about meditation and talking about, um, what we're doing and Hatha and breathing techniques and all of these things, it's, it's hard to put it into like tangible like words and explain it it's like yeah. you have to kind of experience it yes. and that's kind of how we're going about even our marketing and our you know our 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 advertise everything it's like you really have to kind of experience it to under to fully understand mm -hmm. um tangibly like what it is you kind of have to let go of like that <laughs> yeah. knowledge like well what is it and you know what does it do and how is it doing it yeah. it's like just let it happen yeah um so yeah are you going to read something? <laughs> well, I, I wrote down, it's, so like when you're saying like, who are we and what are our goals? Uh -huh. So I started writing things, but it's, it's, it's sometimes easy to say who we are when I say, okay, this is exactly who we're not. Uh -huh. And oh, so then yeah. I was able to kind of, I don't need to like read, read kind all of, of like, these, but like it helped me go, okay, so we're definitely not these things. Mm -hmm. So, so this, it, it means we're kind of more the like opposite. this. We're the yeah. opposite. So like. You know, I just wrote what we are, you know, soulful, connect to the breath. I wrote, it's everything. So, but that's so simple and that's so simple. Well, it is, but our breath is, it's everything. It's our life energy. It's our life force. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Let's work with that. Um, it keeps things really simple. That's what we're doing here. We're breathing. We're whatever, whatever we just, whatever techniques we're employing in there. Um, mind, body, soul you know, tapping into vulnerability, mm -hmm. not just the outer physical benefits, but the inner, the spiritual development. We're, we're all about that. Mindfulness, awareness. This is how I create classes. So when I create classes, my intention is where are we pointing our focus? Mm -hmm. Where is our awareness moving? Is it a location on the body? Is it with the energy? What, mm -hmm. like what's happening there? Um, you know, embodying authenticity, um, a sanctuary. This is a sanctuary for people. Um, you know, some things that we're not is like overly bottom line oriented. We kind of have to create space from that a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, yeah. You, you know, what's neat about what you and Larissa are talking about is that you are really about like helping people just kind of, um, grow or like transcend this like current state of, of, uh, of existence yes. or, or living. Yes. And it's not, and I think that's just really cool that you guys yeah. are that's what you're giving with being teachers yeah we and mm -hmm. you know her boyfriend him and I have great conversations but he came up he would come up to me and go 
you guys have this platform to like, and he's so like passionate about it. He's like, you guys can say things and you guys can share things. Mm -hmm. And like, this is giving you guys this space and other people are going to learn and grow. I think what it comes down to is we're raising our level of consciousness is what I was saying to Larissa earlier. Yeah, it doesn't happen overnight, but slowly and surely that's the goal is we're raising our level of being, our dimensions Mm -hmm. of being are, we're leveling up. Which is really, I mean, yoga obviously means like union or to yoke, but it's also, it's like being able to control the mind, like, like all of these techniques help with, um, tranquil mind help with eventually controlling the mind. Yeah. Controlling the mind. And that is, you know, with the asanas on the mat and then also out in the modern world, how do you react to challenge and how do you react to, um, yeah, to, you know, if things don't go your way or you're Mm -hmm. being challenged or physically or mentally or emotionally, um, do you let it happen and try to just breathe through it and, you know, like go with the flow and allow yourself, allow, just allow it to happen, allow it to be Mm -hmm. and have faith that everything's going to work out. Or do you like freak out, have this crazy, you know, mental, um, dispute and you know you're freaking out in your mind and you know you're yeah it's just yeah just allowing yourself to kind of be aware of that and and then at some point with self-reflection you kind of start to realize wow okay like this is happening anyways like let it happen it's okay you know it's like I could either freak out and like you know resist it Mm -hmm. or let it be and you can open up yeah Oh yeah, that's. that's. <laughs> I get, I totally get what you're talking about, and it's just really neat that you're bringing that here to this area, because, it yeah, you are right. Like there's there's so many great studios out there, and, um, but it's neat that your your intention is to kind of nurture that mindfulness side, nurture the meditation, that more exploration of like the other limbs of yoga instead of just going straight through the asana. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the asana plays its role because it helps us to fall in love or can become comfortable with the physical Mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. And that's the pathway to that inner self Mm -hmm. of yours. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You have to start somewhere and that's Mm -hmm. why we do the asana. Cause if you do, you, you, yeah, people people want to see results and they want to learn about their body and they want to feel good on the outside and look good. So yeah, we have to start there too. We We want that. We want that. That's Mm -hmm. just, yeah, it's like just kind of an, an aftermath. It's like a, it's just a benefit. Yeah, it's, a, it's a definitely a benefit for sure. The physical, um, yeah, just feeling good and you know, it's something too. Once you become more mindful in one aspect of your life, whether that's you know your body, your physical body, and your diet and exercise, it. I mean, at least this is my experience, and I'm sure other people's. Um, it kind of starts okay. flowing over into yeah. other areas of your life. You become mm-hmm. mindful in in other areas of your life, your relationships or your um, career or whatever it is. You know, you think you yeah. kind of it's cold. Just I get some cold coffee. <laughs> allow yourself to um, become more self aware in yeah. in every in everything. Um, with your training, did they give you any kind of, I'm just kind of curious, did they give you any kind of, um, like, set sequence? Like, were you all, were you working on, like, learning one sequence, or was it just the traditional postures, and then you would build your own sequences? How did that work? So, um, yeah, so the first week was um, us just practicing them te- that they were teaching we were practicing our, mm-hmm. our three hours and then the second week we started um going over we went over six sequences okay. um so we would practice it and then we would spend hours d- diving into it two and a half hour sequences though so they yes. could easily be broken into many sequences yeah oh cool many okay. many sequences and so um yeah so we took the that each sequence so we would practice it And they, they weren't, yeah, they were more, they were really more about the experience. We're not going to tell you how to feel. We're not going to tell you that this is exactly what we're doing here. You're going to experience it. You're going to do it. And then we'll talk about it after. So we did that. So that's Mm -hmm. six sequences. That's what we did. We broke it down. Um, 
you know, many, many different ways that mm-hmm. we, we broke each posture down and then the philosophy behind it and kind of that inspiration behind the it, energetics. The, the energetics and sequencing then, is mm-hmm. basically what they taught us. And oh, then we cool. worked on like physical hands-on adjustments, Lots of hands-on adjustments. which we do in some of our classes, not every class, but, um, yeah, so we have those as like a tool and a guide to help mm-hmm. us, which like I said, they're like two and a half hour classes, so they can easily be you know, changed and morphed into an hour class. And then really, I mean, I don't know. I've found that sequencing hasn't been that much of a challenge mm-hmm. because we do have, I mean, we have like a, a manual, a huge manual with like so much information and then, you know, all the, all the awesomeness, all the poses, and then, yeah, creating, um, like, a a blueprint of what you want as a teacher and what you're trying to teach, and if if it's physical or if it's energetic, and um, just kind of working off of that and trying to figure out how to um, send that, how to get that. How to get that that message. The thing that I'm finding is that we were taught, you know, a lot of hatha techniques like mm-hmm. mantra and mudra and um, pranayama and these things that they were able to put into the sequence. Mm-hmm. What I'm finding difficult is um, where to place that stuff and also it's not something that you just do with everybody, right? Mm-hmm. So like even the pranayama that we did today, not a lot of people can hold their breath like that. Mm-hmm. So you really... We, I still have to find those people, those more intermediate, I guess, mm-hmm. yogis who have spent some time moving within and, and have spent yeah. some time with some of these techniques. That's when I'll start kind of incorporating some of those hot te- some of those techniques and mm-hmm. tools that, that we, we learned um, with, with the breath work. Yeah. And, so, kind of, and, kind of, and then um, if you want to teach them, um, starting small. Yeah, starting starting, like, starting simple yeah. and slow. Yeah. Simple. Tread lightly. Educating yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, tread lightly with that stuff. Um that's cool. Yeah, and with mm-hmm. be, with beginners or people who who have you know only practiced in Gordon Lane, I know that their experience is somewhat limited. I'm not saying it's like I just know that, you know, some of these techniques are new, right? A lot yeah. of this stuff would is new will be new to Coeur d'Alene and that's okay. And it can and be uncomfortable, you know? Yeah, yoga is yeah. not about, like, yeah. this blissful state of mind and, like, that. looking, you know, like, this certain way and everything that sometimes is, um, you know, the Western look this at yoga. This false positivity, um, I feel like, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Kind of it can be dark and it can be, it can be emotional and it can be, and so it is. It's really all about, like, treading lightly and... Um, mm-hmm not taking people to a place that's too uncomfortable and too, yeah. um, too far, too far, too fast. So, and that might be something that in the future, if we're, you know, finding that people are interested, but we're not getting, you know, there, there's, there's a handful of people that are interested in these types of things. Um, they want to know more, they want to learn more, they want to take their practice to another level. Um, Maybe we'll that do like workshop style. That would be the time. That would yes. be the time to employ some workshop of that stuff. style. So, and we That's really cool. do hope that that happens. But as of right now, since you know we are we're we're new and we're we're starting this, and it's not yeah nothing happens overnight. You know, so yeah. I think that that'll be something that we'll do in the future once mm-hmm. we get those people that are more seriously Mm -hmm. interested and curious about that's what our practice is that's our individual practice is yeah we practice with yeah pranayamas and mudras and mantras and all sorts of different things and and that doesn't mean that that's what our students will practice with yeah that's a great boundary that you set up because it's it that that's really powerful that you both see that and can apply imply it because Mm -hmm. or apply apply it because i know exactly what you mean like it's super it's just something I think that old teachers uh, probably become aware of, and they realize like what I do at home is not what I'm going to be bringing to the students. Exactly. You know, it's going to be and and I think it's neat that like that you're open to the students telling you like, oh, I really want to learn more pranayama, so you can kind of start maybe a mentorship with that particular yeah. person or doing a workshop a private session. Yeah, or a private doing, session. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you gone in, into any kind of like actual privates like? with since you've gotten back have you started exploring that I did I was during the summer with mm-hmm. a couple people we were doing some private sessions cool. and all I was kind of doing with them is like really just observing them and mm-hmm. and you know who they are and and um then kind of just doing 
yeah, those lighter practices that we're just, you know, we're focusing on the asana and mm -hmm. we're focusing on relaxation. That's what's, need, that's what's needed here. Yeah. That's what's needed here. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. And if, yeah, we are to do private sessions, it is. It's very, like, individualized and, like, really trying to understand this person. That person doesn't need to understand me. I mean, I need to understand them. So it is. It is a lot of work. And that's yeah. something that we're finding, too. And something that we, we knew, but it's like all these things that we're like, oh, well, we kind of talked about this, and this is something that we're always like, oh, now I get what Zika yes. Yoga was oh, telling what us. Oh, were saying. But it's not about th – this is really not about us. And, we, yeah, all of our um, – all of our teachings and practices and, and guiding is really about the student. What and this community It doesn't and wants. matter what what we do, really, no, you know, no. I, person, like personally in our personal practice and not getting yeah. those mixed up. Um, oh, totally. So I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah it really is because mm -hmm. it just, yeah, because you're giving. It's so neat, the, the beat that you have, the awareness that you have of this community. Oh, well, like, we're trying. We're, yeah. That's where we put a lot of our focus is... Mm -hmm is on what, what, who are these people? And we're listening. We're yeah. just very like taking on that, like the Buddhists say, the beginner's mind. If you can take on the beginner's mind, you can find out some stuff ab about people just by watching people. Well, and it's one of those things too, where it is, it's challenging in a sense because um, mm -hmm. I grew up here and you know, I have had kind of like a jaded like <laughs> um like experience not like jaded experience but kind of in the sense that I'm like you know this is like part of kind of my old self or like mm -hmm. who I once was before my like real like transformation and like yoga journey started and I know that some people might still see me in that light and like it's still mm -hmm. just one of those things where it's um you just have to let that go. It's like com becoming comfortable with who you are right now mm -hmm. and expressing that. And, um, yeah, it's something that is always, I think, going to be, you know, might be challenging. But um, but it's, it's really it's cool. powerful, though. It's, like, really yeah. cool is letting those people. things go. And, <clears throat> and also, it's been really cool. I've had some people come into the studio that are, like, you know, from high school or from, you know, like these, and it, it's just, it's awesome. It's really cool seeing, um, yeah, Coeur d'Alene being open to yoga and being open to the studio and supporting us and supporting what we're trying to offer, what we want to offer. And, um, yeah, I love Coeur d'Alene. I really do. It's, it's so beautiful here. Mm -hmm. And there are so, it. like, so many amazing people here. And, um, it's, it's a really, it is like, it's starting to, um, it's kind of like it's been kind of like a bulb for a while yes. and planted. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like really starting to grow mm -hmm. and to um, blossom. And, exactly. And it's, it's neat because like, cause your studio popped up. Like you said, there's a few other studios popping up. Mm -hmm. There's the Innovative Collective oh, downtown. Yeah. There's like so many neat things that are starting to mm -hmm. kind of uplift and kind of overtake that yes. bar scene downtown. A progressiveness. Yes. Yes. It's like yes. pulling people away from that. Exactly. Up 4th fourth, up, up fourth Street is yeah. like all of these really neat creative people uh -huh. who are exactly. yep. and I just, We love Little Midtown. I, yeah. Me too. Street. East Sherman is, is going to it's become something like mm -hmm. that. I mean mm -hmm. they're starting it and actually it's happened way quicker. Like it's expected. happening way qu quicker than we expected. There's um, a couple gyms opening up down here. They're um, changing, like, the parking, putting in, like, planting trees and making it more accessible for walking and for biking. Um, and there's, like, a little cider house that's going to be right next to us, Coeur d'Alene Cider cool. Top House. And then um, there's so many things happening, so that's really cool. Yeah, there's, like, a little food truck pod that's going to be opening up down here cool. um, in the yeah, summer. Yeah, they're going to be having tons yeah. of food trucks, literally walking distance, like an outdoor cafe style with and food trucks. That's and... something that, that's just what you're talking about. I love what you were saying about how Coeur d'Alene is just growing into this progressive community, and, like, Austin and I... Um, we always like resented coming back home and like staying here. We were like, okay, this mm -hmm. is just this is home, and yeah. it just it's so comfortable, and we have all these um, stories with all these people, and we've kind of grown from that. And but then there was like this t time where we realized like we really wanted to be a part of that progressive community in Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. We really wanted to offer something here, and we both feel that. Um, and then that's a huge reason why I did take this leap and I did decide to um, 
to buckle down and get like <laughs> roots in Coeur d'Alene and it still freaks me out really bad but um but that's that's like it's amazing like yeah. it's like so much talking and so much talking and envisioning and dreaming and then all of a sudden it's like it's like happening it. yeah and, and you're doing it yeah, yeah and it's yeah. really not I mean I'm not gonna say it's been easy but it's mm-hmm. really not yeah. as it's scary like anyone, as we any, you know like if you have a dream and a vision and a passion like go, go for, for it, it because yeah. it's actually tangible like it can happen and it it really if you set your mind to it it can happen pretty effortlessly mm-hmm. like yeah it can you start to find people who can like exactly, support it making and, these connections yeah. and a quarter lane i mean that's something that's actually also it can be a really cool thing is that it's really all about connections and mm-hmm. community and who mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. um and preserving it like that's something that i've been so we moved back here from new york in november of last year and for a while i was like we lived there for three and a half wow. three and a half years or something and it was like it was a great experience and I, lo- I I found a great studio yoga studio there nice. that I actually really miss. Oh, it sure. was just like so cool and but what I was um, getting at though is like when my husband and I when we moved back here I was like kind of like what you were saying I was kind of resentful to it mm-hmm. because I was like okay so we're coming back here it's like so does this mean that you know we didn't make it it or feels like, like a step back anything? yeah it does and then what you're saying I t- it totally resonates with me because it's like my mom says this she's like you know if you want to make a change like why not do it in yes. where you're from yeah because it's the it's where you're from that actually um the you wherever someone is from no matter what community you live in there's a there's something that that you can fulfill there there's something yes. that you can give back to that community yes. and it's like like what you're doing at the studio it's like if not you then who yeah you know if you yeah. And so it's every all these things that we that we're doing when you connect that intuition with your passion when you connect those two worlds it's like you can really offer the community and actually uplift it again mm-hmm. like everyone that's bringing something to these communities within this area they're like making it better they're building exactly up so, because we need that or yeah. it's gonna like it will get taken over by like just this huge resort yes. tourist scene yeah. and it doesn't. If that's not it. There's people that actually live here. And that's something that's <laughs> you know? really huge, too, mm-hmm. is, like, supporting each other and yeah. supporting local mm-hmm. and empowering each other. And that's something mm-hmm. that I, yeah, I love what you're doing is, like, bringing people together oh, okay. and, like, mm-hmm. the yoga mm-hmm. community. And, yeah. you know, it's, like, so, it's so important. And that em- empowerment of not just women. Like, I love, like, the women feminine aspect of it because I think that, there's so many it. women that um, that don't truly go after their passions because yeah. of the male dominance and, and you know business and everything. But in general, just empowering um, empowering others because yeah, it's like if ever if we lived in a world where everyone was passionate about what they were doing and everyone was doing what they loved and you know had this community where it was just yeah based off of passion and intuition and offering something um to the community like you're talking about it would be a much better it'd be a perfect world like let's do this it'd be on fire yeah on fire we'd be literally like lighting we'd all be like skyrocketing not global warming fire but like like, (laughs) inner fire like holy spirit whatever your spirit is fire yeah yeah inner fire yeah that's so cool i know i just love where we live too like so okay so kind of last few questions so (laughs) Um, one, so we're talking about how much you love this area. So, um, Emily, one place that you would suggest people to visit besides your studio mm-hmm. in Coeur d'Alene or like in this, you know, region, mm-hmm. where would you suggest? Innovation Collective. Oh, Coeur yeah. d'Alene Coffee Company. Because, because, um, when you go there, if you're like kind of open, like people will know and they'll start talking to you. And you'll start having these conversations about business in life and um, what they're working on and what you're working on. And it really does that space, the, the kind of the atmosphere really promotes that. 
Cool. Um, so Connection it, and community. Yeah, so if you are, if you really want to go somewhere and just like hang out or whatever you want to do, have some coffee, have a bagel, meet people, talk to people, sit by a huge fire, um, mm-hmm. have some really good coffee, go to Innovation Collective. And that's actually where we found um, our connection for this, this space, space and this studio. Oh. And we're also going to be working with them in the future as well, so, um, doing some guided meditations, meditations at the den in the den. At I'm the putting Innovation together Collective. a proposal, which I'm almost done with, so we'll be leading a meditation series for Innovation Collective. So and they're just all about like they're all about like supporting wow, yeah. like supporting like the community yeah. and make like they've created, I mean, such an amazing community of yeah. people uh-huh. um, that are seventy over seventy events a year. Yeah, and that are really about like uplifting this community mm-hmm. and uplifting um, entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and like getting ideas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like grounding the ideas, yeah. getting action actually, behind them. actually um, building their products, mm-hmm. actually yeah. building their ideas, and and so they bring all the, they have all these events where you start to meet people that are like, yeah, I'll build your website for you. Yeah, here I know these people that will distribute your whatever, and and getting all these people together. Oh, I'm a patent lawyer. Yep, yep, yep. I'll work do, and it's like we all do oh, things for each other. Creating like all these connections. So they That's are they're really... creating businesses there that have flourished and are made some 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 of those entrepreneurial businesses are making millions of dollars in revenue a year that's cool. and they've yeah. only been there for four years three yeah. or four, four years um, Still pretty young. so what yeah so what they're doing is is amazing and um, I talked to the owner had a meeting with him and yeah he he what's cool about him is he's like I want to do something meaningful like I don't want to just do hot yoga and wine or hot yoga and beer or whatever right. that is yeah it's kind of like and I kind of looked at him and I was like yes yes oh my gosh somebody <laughs> understands he's like I don't want to just like put together a little shop and sell crap to people here. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're doing. Like they bring, they bring people from Google and Facebook and people that are building software and all sorts of doing all sorts of things globally and and making a huge impact on the world. And they bring those people there and they're like, talk to us, tell Mm -hmm. us what you're doing. Talk to us about innovation. Talk to us about well-being. So they do this whole Thing, um, through, through their events, it's they have. I don't know exactly what all of them are, but like eight different kind of topics, and they're all wrapped around creativity, well-being, inner and outer well-being, because you can't actually have tech and you can't create and be innovative without people who are grounded and people yeah. who who can who can get there. You know, people who are healthy and spiritual, whatever mm-hmm. you want to whatever yeah. you want to call it. So he understands this and contacted us and said hey okay so we they're doing lots of different stuff wellness wise Mm -hmm. but what they were missing is kind of something tangible where every month you you meditate we actually come together and meditate and so right now the series the series will just be a class once a month but him and I both know that it's going to turn into way more than that Mm -hmm. he eventually wants it to be on a weekly basis we are meditating with the people that have are in the co-working space, in the offices, the public, the general public too. Everyone can come, mm-hmm. and we will guide um, kind of some mindful movements and guide us. And the intention is to guide us into a tranquil, calm, easeful meditation. Wow. Because so many, I mean, um, like Google and all these bigger businesses, they and all know these this. People are realizing that meditation is like realizing the benefits of meditation, yeah. and it's not just some like woo woo thing that's just like oh like We're you just, know it's some hippie thing it's actually amazing and it can be super beneficial that are, for people that are in the business world because it's um like studies have shown that it makes you smarter it makes you more focused it makes you um more compassionate and uh, more communal um oh, yeah. which is so huge for business I mean really Mm -hmm. so it's really cool seeing those types of people that are becoming more interested in um, meditation and it's something that could be very useful for for everyone but also you know but for for those types of people so it's really cool so we'll see where that goes where that takes us so I can't wait to stay keep me in the loop (laughs) yeah for sure and what about you Larissa one place um gosh so hard. Um, it could be food. It yeah. can be like hike. It could be whatever. Ooh, um, yeah. I mean, for me, I love I love hiking, and that's like definitely my other passion. If I'm like, if I don't do yoga every day, I'm I'm doing I'm hiking. So um, 
I I mean, one of my favorites is obviously just Tubbs Hill. There's so many mm-hmm. favorites that are a little more hidden gems yeah, keep, um, keep that I can keep to myself. <laughs> but because I have, yeah, we have two dogs, and we tend to try to go somewhere where we can like let them let them loose and let them free and have our solitude. But um, there's plenty of options in the Coeur d'Alene area for um, whatever type of hike you're looking for. But Tubbs is definitely just a, a favorite. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Tubbs is beautiful. We hike, and there's, we hike it all the time in the summer. Yeah. And all there's the so many trails. So if you, uh, if you come to Coeur d'Alene, you hike Tubbs. Mm-hmm. Just keep your eye out for, like, side trails. Yeah. Because there's just not up. just the main trail. There's, like, a lot of little secret ones totally. that are yeah. there in the old, if you go up, you can always find a way down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just and there'll have be fun nobody with it. up there. No yeah. one will be up there. You'll be by yourself. It's cool because it's like right in the middle of downtown. But when you're up there, you feel like you're just taken out of this totally. area. It's yeah. so it's so special. It I is. love it. I know. What seeds are you planting now? Like that. Ooh. What would you like to see the space kind of blo- blossom into? I would like to see um, not just in this. Okay, I would like to see people. I would like to see that space completely silent mm. in a year. So you can kind of chit chat here and, and stuff like that, but during class, like before class, it's completely silent in there. No music. I mean, there, okay, so in one of our flow, and who knows if that will still be going on in a year? Mm-hmm. We're not sure, but in our flow class, we are we do play some light music. And in our slow mm-hmm. class. And in our, in our slow class. But for the most Again, part. it's kind of respecting where people are at. Exactly. Like, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. you have to. That's why I say in a year, mm-hmm. if, I, if I would want this place to look like something or feel like something, it would feel like silence mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't take away, like, the, the connection. It actually does builds connection yeah. it builds connection with yourself and with others you guys like we they leave on like a higher frequency but yeah that space in there where you know I'm I get to just sit at the front with my eyes closed and everyone comes in and it could be a little awkward for people but it's it's this is a silent space and we practice in complete silence and so that's mm-hmm. what I would like to see for there in a year maybe cool. and then I would like to see people around town meditating just like mm-hmm. meditating in their offices, meditating outside, meditating on the rocks at tubs, um, meditating. Cool. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. What about you, Larissa? Um, I would say um, a little community. I don't really care how big it is, but a small community of people that um, that we've connected with and that they have found some... Um, substance and meaning in what we're doing here and they're consistent yeah. and we are able to do kind of like what we talked about more workshop more kind of growth um with with a with a group of people that are um curious and serious about yoga, yoga. and about what we're doing and um, the techniques that we can kind of go a little bit more in depth with so okay yeah, that's and really good. <laughs> cool. Well, this has been so lovely. Thank yeah, you. This, this has been fun. Yeah, this, <laughs> this has been, been awesome. Great. Emily and Larissa, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me and to open up to Yoga Kins listeners about what it's been like to be a new yoga teacher and, you know, opening up a new studio. What you are doing with the space is really special and it's supporting this shift in consciousness that is happening within our community and don't forget this sunday march 3rd at 3 p.m the space yoga studio is hosting dream time sound journey in yoga nidra space is limited sign up on their facebook page the space yoga studio if you haven't already please subscribe to the podcast and leave a review it actually really helps Stay tuned for the next episode where we travel back to Spokane and you get to meet the yoga teacher behind Yoga And, Emily Stone. Emily breaks down how she sequences yoga classes and how she utilizes visualization as a way to connect with her students. Until then, follow Yoga Can on social media and let's talk about yoga. It has been so great to meet some of you on social media. I've really enjoyed talking with you. So please continue to ask your yoga questions and tell me about yogis from your community whom you would like to hear on the podcast. 
please continue to take care of yourselves mentally and physically. Namaste and Shanti peace to you and your household.